30 minutes prior to breaking my fast, I like to sip on cinnamon tea. In fact, I sip on cinnamon tea a lot throughout the course of the day after I cut out caffeine. And there's a number of reasons why, in terms of fasting, why I feel like it helps. The main thing I want to focus on here is what is called the methyl hydroxy chalcone polymer. And that is the potential for cinnamon to act as an insulin mimicker. Now, some of the evidence is a little bit bleak, but if you start compiling the data, you see, oh wow, this does make sense. And maybe this is why I respond so well. So let's break it down. When we are fasting, our cortisol levels are higher. It's the way that it is. And everyone wants to bag on cortisol, but the reality is that cortisol, when we do not have food present, when insulin is not present, cortisol actually stimulates hormone-sensitive lipase. It allows us to burn fat. And I've talked about this in other videos. Cortisol is going to become a problem when insulin is present. Because once the stress hormones, cortisol, are elevated along with insulin, along with food, that's when lipoprotein lipase goes to work. That's when we start storing fat from the cortisol. But in a fasted state, cortisol is kind of our friend. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we do break our fast, that our insulin levels don't go through the roof. Because remember, when we do break our fast, consequently, our cortisol levels are still gonna be high. We're going from deep into a fasted state where cortisol levels are high, to all of a sudden consuming food, of course the cortisol is still gonna be high. So how do we potentially modulate the insulin effect? Well, the early studies surrounding cinnamon were published in the Indian Journal of Clinical Biochemistry. Now, these were petri dish studies, so we don't take them all the way to the bank, okay, but we look at the data. They found that cultured muscle cells, when exposed to cinnamon, ended up having an increased translocation of the GLUT4 transporter. What does that mean? GLUT4, grabs glucose out of the bloodstream independent of insulin. So in theory, based on this Petri dish study, cinnamon made it so that there was less insulin required for the nutrients, for the glucose to get into the cell. You see where I'm going with this, right? Okay, so then we start looking at some of the larger data. We start looking at some of the human studies. There was a study that was published in the journal Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism. This one was interesting because it took a look at a five gram dose of cinnamon. It gave subjects a five gram dose of cinnamon prior to a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. So a 75 gram shot of glucose. Okay, it found that those that consumed the cinnamon cleared the glucose out of their system faster, which somewhat backed up what the Indian study had published. That's very fascinating. They also found that subjects that consumed cinnamon even 12 hours prior to ended up having a better glucose response as well. So my point in saying this is I sip on cinnamon because I feel like, okay, I am potentially making it so that I'm not having as big of an insulin response, so that if my cortisol levels are elevated, then maybe I'm not having this uh, combination of cortisol and insulin after I break my fast. But there's other reasons too as well, because I feel like it's a great pregame. The cinnamon tea that I typically use, by the way, is one from Peak Tea. I've talked about them before on this channel. They are a triple toxin screen, mixes with hot or cold water, very, very awesome stuff, delicious tasting, very, very good when it comes down to fasting. So they have this cinnamon tea that I really like. It's caffeine free, it's perfect for me to sip on. Again, I can have it with hot water, I can have it with cold water. So if I feel like having iced tea, I can have iced tea. If I feel like having a warm tea before I break my fast, I can do that. So there is a special link down below and that link's going to save you 5% off if you wanna try them out. Okay, that is a special link that is only for viewers of this channel. So that is a 5% discount link down below. Again, it's called Peak Tea Crystals. And if you heard me talk about Dr. Jason Fung on this channel, this is Dr. Jason Fung's fasting tea. So he's come up with this stuff. So he's got great formulations when it comes down to fasting. And this one is just perfect. So again, like 30, 60 minutes prior to breaking a fast, and it tastes delicious. If you wanna add some sweetener with it, you could, but it tastes delicious just the way that it is. There's no added anything, okay? They put some spearmint in it, so it gets a little bit of that sort of digestive effect as well, but it's got a, just a delicious, well-rounded flavor. So again, that link for 5% off of the Peak Tea Cinnamon Fasting Tea, that herbal tea is down below in the description. The hunger is a huge piece too. Towards the end of a fast, I would say about 50% of the people I talk to end up getting really hungry. That can obviously pose an issue prior to breaking a fast. 
So if we can potentially control the insulin a little bit more and not have as big of an insulin slide by having some cinnamon prior to breaking a fast, then we can control the area of the brain called the ventral tegmental area a little bit more. This is an area of the brain that responds to insulin and sort of has that reward-seeking behavior. So when our insulin levels kind of go up and get cattywampus, this region of the brain triggers this reward-seeking behavior. Think about it, that's the last thing that you want. The last thing you want is reward-seeking behavior at the end of a fast, right before you're about to go find food. You don't want reward-seeking behavior, you want complete and utter control, right? So if we potentially control the insulin response with this methyl hydroxychalcone polymer from cinnamon, then maybe we can make it so that region of the brain isn't overactive and we can control how we break our fast a little bit more. The other piece of the equation that I like to look at, and again, some of it's a stretch, but when we look at how our body deals with the food that's coming in, when we are fasting and all of a sudden we break a fast, we're going to have a higher degree of an inflammatory response. We're going to have reactive oxygen species. We're going to have that happen, okay? We, we weren't eating and all of a sudden we're eating, so we're gonna have oxidative stress. Cinnamaldehyde, the active component of cinnamon, activates something called NRF2, which is very, very critical for the liver to form glutathione. Now, I'm not gonna get on my high horse and say that it's all about glutathione, but I am going to say that it is important to support the body's natural process with that. You have what is called a glutamine cysteine ligase, and you also have these other complexes that are involved, and NRF2 is required for those complexes. So when you have NRF2 that plays a role in forming glutathione, that you can see how that could play a role in terms of when we consume food, we are potentially modulating some of that reactive oxygen species effect. Again, this is one of those things where it may be a negligible thing, but in the big picture, like if we are consistently fasting and consistently exposing ourselves to high levels of oxidative stress, then maybe we can at least give the body what it needs to deal with it better. So by getting a little bit smarter with our fasting and having sort of a pregame with some cinnamon, it's not gonna break a fast, it's only going to potentially help you. So again, I highly recommend that you check out Peak Tea Crystals down below in the description. And if you can't do that, you can just add some cinnamon to water, but you might as well make it taste good in the process. I'll see you tomorrow.